Okay, sisters fans, uh, last night's episode was called Feeling the Heat, but dear lord, I felt like I wanted to give it the cold shoulder because this episode won't it. Three out of ten. Um, did not really uh, care for it all that much. I didn't. I mean, when I did my live stream, I talked about how it wasn't awful, but... Here's, here's what happened last night. So I was watching the episode through my Dish Anywhere app on my TV. But I don't know what was going down. Maybe some Wi-Fi issues or something. But the picture kept going out. So most of the episode, I was watching it in the sense of back in like the pre-TV days where families would gather together and listen to the radio. So I was hearing everything that was going on, but I didn't see what was going on. Until I rewatch certain scenes of the episode. Look, people be posting scenes, if not the full episode, on social media. So I was rewatching things for context with the actual picture available. And I was like, oh, wow. This episode, while I was going to give it grace at first, because it's a setup episode for what's to come. So I don't want to be too hard on it. But then when I rewatch certain scenes. This episode, it felt like a lot of the characters, most of their worst character traits were showing. And that sucks. Like, I'll say it again. Most of these characters had their worst character traits on full display. Not all of them, but most of them. And yet again, I can't believe I'm saying this. The Hayden scene, one of my favorite scenes of the episode. And no, it wasn't just because Tamir is fine, but I'm actually somewhat engaged in that storyline compared to everything else going on. I'll probably do a separate video talking about the whole baby mama crap because it really is a tired, played out, dry ass storyline to base most of your entire series around at this point. And that's not a good thing. I will definitely say this much. When it comes down to this episode of Sisters, you could easily skip it and not really miss anything. I know I haven't even got into the review part of this review yet, but I was looking at the comment section of my live from last night. We had a very good turnout. We had well over 300 people. But um, a lot of people are saying the same thing every week. I'm glad I don't watch the show anymore. Or... I don't watch it week to week. I pretty much wait for like three to four episodes to go by and I binge them at once because the show moves at such a slow play, uh, pace that watching them in a binge format is the best way to get through it. Or on the flip side, I just watch your reviews because I don't watch it at all. And then after listening to what you have to say, I don't miss a thing at all because I'm tired of it. It's boring. So... When it comes down to it, Sisters was meh. What do we have to talk about? And trust me, along the way, I'll describe where I feel characters were definitely letting their worst character traits display. So Maurice basically tells John Williams to fuck off because he's not turning on Sabrina. He doesn't believe Sabrina would give him up. In terms of, you know, to avoid 30 years in, you know, prison. So he tells him to go. He's not signing anything. All right. So next up, you have Andy. Who now knows about Zach and Fatima's engagement. And the reason she wasn't told anything was due to the fact that Fatima was concerned that she might blab about it to Karen. And... I did chuckle a few times due to the fact that, you know, Fatima... One thing I will give the show credit for... When I tweet something, but then like 10 seconds later, a character will, it's like, hey, you know, Fatima ought to say this to Zach, and then she says it, and I'm like, oh shit. So it's kind of like those moments I really love. But when it comes to uh, this scene, she's like, you know, how come, you, how are you a lawyer, but you suck at lying, or you don't have a good poker face? So basically, she also talks about the Tamara plan and how she's setting up Hayden but then Andy shifts the uh, topic of discussion over to, are you and Zach getting married? Fatima states, I love him. He loves me. But the whole might be the baby mama thing. I mean, baby daddy thing. 
I'm not really feeling that. We need to, like, settle the score because that's going to determine a lot. And then Andy's obviously hiding something because I'm thinking, Andy, if you don't shut your mouth, I wish you would say something like, Zach's the father, and then that will freak up their entire engagement and whatnot based on something that you don't even know to be true because it's weird to me how, you know, Andy can see other people when they're lying, aside from Gary, but she's bad at keeping secrets herself. I don't know. Or she's bad at being a liar. Even though she has, she has been a convincing liar at times, but it seems like the more the show goes on, I mentioned this in another video, I guess we're getting more comedic with the characters now, that she's becoming a less convincing liar as we go episode to episode. All right. Now, basically from there, the uh, you know, the whole marriage might be on hold due to child support, but they'll figure things out one thing at a time. And she mentions the Heather situation about Hayden finding out about the baby mama situation with Heather and how that links to Zach and how that could definitely leave a dent in his bank account. All right. So we go over to Q who wants to walk Danny to her car. But here we go with um, yet another example of characters who are really showing their worst sides. All right. Danny eventually agrees to let Q walk her to her car and get a hit off her vape pen. He does want to take out the drinks, but she's like, look, not tonight. But he, he, she, he eventually convinced her to do so. We go over to the restaurant where it's like, what did he say? It's like, you know, uh, it's right down the street or something to go get some drinks. It's like they have dinner and drinks. And... Basically, they're having fun, but, you know, Danny has to leave because we know she's going to meet with her girls later on. And Q, I'm like, this fool is just trying to find someplace new to stay. I don't really know what he's trying to do. But overall, um, it, it's ridiculous. So the reason I feel that it's ridiculous is the fact he's coming on a bit too strong. But, you know, Danny's like, look, I'm not taking you home because I learned my lesson. Oh, and what lesson is that? That some of y'all are crazy as hell. So she goes back to the apartment and Preston is waiting for her like a damn puppy. So similar, similar to what happened in seasons, let's say late season two and season three, you have Preston who's happy to see her. Hey, I'm glad you're home. I wanted to talk to you. Danny doesn't want to hear it because she's too busy running, you know, to see her girls and whatnot. And he mentions how the landlord who is Danny's neighbor, by the way, um, knew about the whole Jonah situation about her getting hit and then him, you know, getting hit by her car. Danny doesn't want to talk about it. And then she just leaves. And, you know, Preston's like, well, we'll talk about this when you get home then. Here's my big problem with this. This pretty much confirms what I said before that Preston is nothing more than a house sitter. And to be there to make sure, you know, Danny's safe in the event that Jonah decides to get revenge. Danny went out with another guy to get drinks, knowing full well she got a man waiting on her at home. What kind of bullshit is this? Not only does she not say a damn thing about the Q thing, because she literally just came back from having drinks. Mind you, yes, nothing sexual happened and whatnot, but it's the fact that you know you asked the man. Not only do you have a man at home, you're the one that asked him to stay there. And yet you go out for drinks with another guy. And then, you know, you drop everything to go see your girls and basically can't even give him like five minutes of your time to have a conversation. Preston needs to pack up his cowboy hat, pack up what little clothes and whatnot he might have and get the hell on out of there. And it just drives me crazy that in the next episode he wants to, he says, I want you to marry me. Oh, trust me, there's another person who mentions marriage and man, <laughs> oh yeah, we, we're, we're getting to that, we're getting to that. All right, so... um we have Tamara, and mind you, I'm just kind of jumping throughout the episode here. We go to Hayden's office, her and Tamara, I mean, him and Tamara pretty much finish up their business. He'll look into it to see if um, there's a case there. And when he's getting up to, you know, bid her farewell, she notices he's hard. And, you know, honestly, the hard thing aside, it's actually pretty, it's a pretty cute scene. We know he's being played, but like I said before, I think Tamara is going to see a side of Hayden that... Fatima and everybody else has never seen before. Basically, you know, 
she invites him out to drinks over at her place so they leave together. And then later on in the episode, she calls Fatima and lets her know about the update. Oh, within a week's time, he's going to be eating out of the palm of my hand. And, you know, the reason that Fatima even wants this uh, whole hate and distraction thing to happen is to basically keep him away from messing up her situation. And I think that kind of sucks because it looks like at this point, we're not really going to see Hayden lose everything, but him just being distracted by Tamara. And it's kind of weird because at this point, it's too little too late. Hayden has done a lot and he's continuing to do a lot. Now, if this would have happened prior to, let's say, Heather linking with Hayden to sue Zach for child support, then yeah. But Fatima, there's been a lot that has gone down via Hayden. And then the fact that you keep showing him grace, now all of a sudden you want to have him distracted. Shouldn't that have been something you did a while ago? All right. So the other thing to talk about here, let's talk about the Maurice stuff. So Maurice calls Calvin from jail, pretty much asks if Sabrina gave him up. Calvin does everything he can to convince him that Sabrina didn't give you up. Andy helped him out, uh, helped her out with getting bail. And, you know, Maurice is still in his feelings about it. And he's joking and whatnot. And then um, he'll try to get him out. So that's pretty much it. So from there, Calvin goes over to Sabrina's place. Oh, also, uh, we have a good scene, a pretty, you know, good scene with uh, Karen and Sabrina at the salon. Some people are like, ain't no way in hell Karen got that hair fixed up that quick. I, I'm a guy. I barely have hair. I don't really know much about black women's hair, so I don't know how long this stuff takes. So I'm not going to give my input on how long or how short of a time that Karen should have taken to get the hair ready. I honestly don't care. And... Yeah, so in any case, she doesn't charge her, says I love you, gives her a hug. It was really sweet. And they'll meet up at Andy's penthouse. Pam wants to know what's going down, but, you know, um, there's a phone call, which I will talk about soon enough. But Calvin goes over to Sabrina's to talk, to check in with her, but basically to warn her, hey, you know, Maurice called and things aren't looking good. That DA wants him to give you up. So... I did my best to convince him that, you know, you didn't turn on him or anything because I know you didn't and I don't think you did. But with Maurice in the situation he's in, it might be hard to, you know, make sure he doesn't give you up. So basically, if you're going to talk with Andy, make sure you do it as soon as possible to see if there's a way to get him out of jail. So yet again, you know, Sabrina's going to bring it up to her at the penthouse, no doubt. But there ain't nothing that can be done because yet again, Sabrina, I don't think you know this, but it took three million dollars dollars to get your ass out from behind bars ain't no way the same thing okay to be honest i don't think the bail would be the same amount for uh maurice i think that da might try to raise the price even more as a way of showing maurice you know what your only way out is to um give up sabrina so i could see something like that possibly happening but um yeah there's no way to get him out so out of nowhere bio just shows up and he basically reveals like, hey, I've been calling you, you know, for the last few days and I haven't gotten any answers and I've dropped by your place three times and I haven't heard anything. So this yet confirms what I've suspected. Bio had no idea Sabrina was arrested. Calvin decides to be, you know, assertive like, oh, you don't see me here? I do now. And, you know, it's just ridiculous. He's, he's like puffing out his chest. Man. Stop acting like you grew up here because you beat up Q with that golf club. Just no. I was waiting for them to start another damn fight. But Sabrina basically, you know, I mean, Cal uh, excuse me, Bio would seem disappointed when he saw Calvin sitting there. And then, you know, Sabrina says, you know, I'll call you later. So then Bio leaves. And then Sabrina's like, Calvin, don't start. Look, I need to get ready to go meet the girls. But before I do, um, you know, you stay here. Oh, actually, she said I need to change clothes because... Her current outfit has hair on it because she went to the salon. And um, when I get out, when I change clothes, just stay here so we can talk a bit. And I'm thinking to myself, are we really trying to push these two together? I don't know. It's ridiculous. All right. So we're almost done here. The only thing to talk about now is the Zach and Fatima stuff, which at first I thought would be the best part of the episode. But then as time went on, I just realized, hell no. Because we got some more bad character moments. Now, the... 
the scene started off very well. Zach is just chilling outside, you know, leaning up against the car. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what he's waiting for. And he sees Fatima pull up. He's excited to see her. He, you know, opens the door, helps her out of the car, and, you know, brings her into the house for a surprise. He has a little dinner set up and, you know, expensive gas station wine, which he mentioned it took him three gas stations to get. But from there, here's where things took a turn for the worst. Because I mean, he's like, look, there's a lot of stuff going on. You're so cool about it. I want to make sure you're comfortable. And I just wanted to have a night where we can just relax, unwind, have dinner, have a good time. And I'm thinking to myself the entire time, yeah, Madam's words probably stuck because Deja's been MIA for a while ever since, you know, Zach fooled her into thinking Madam was, you know, right behind her. But, um, yeah, I'm like, okay, great. These two can finally have a night because before Fatima left work, Andy mentioned how, you know, oh, I'm meeting with my girls at the, uh, the penthouse tonight. Oh, well, I know it ain't a party because Karen's pregnant. So usually when you all meet, it's either a drama or a party. So I'm guessing drama. You have fun with that. And then Fatima turned the damn dinner into a sister circle meeting, but we'll get to that in a second. But here's the part that got me. When Zach said, let's get married right now, and I'm like, what the hell, man? Because when he said earlier about how he wants to show that he's committed, he's devoted to her, that, you know, he's this, that, and the third, and I'm thinking to myself, bro, you're engaged. Like, what? And I, and I said this in the team, I said, it seems to me like Zach is only proposing to show how committed he is just to kind of get out of the current bind he was in due to the Deja dance. And I'm like, well, Zach, if something happens again where it's like you got to prove yourself, exa what exactly are you trying to do? Get married on the spot? And that's just what he did. The reason I don't like this is because it felt disingenuous, di dis not genuine, that. Okay, it wasn't as bad as when Aaron told Karen, let's get married at the halfway point of season three. But we only know the reason he wanted to marry Karen was due to the fact that he didn't want to have, you know, sinful sex, you know, having sex without being married to the woman first. But in Zach's case, it just felt, this felt incredibly forced and unneeded. Z Fatima literally isn't even wearing her engagement ring. She's made it clear like she wants to wait till things get settled prior to getting married. It To me, while some might think it's sweet, and I don't honestly see how it does come across as sweet, it seemed completely like Zach doesn't give a crap about Fatima's feelings and her reasoning behind why. Agree or disagree with why she's keeping the whole engagement thing a secret? I don't think this was a good move because Zach put yourself in Fatima's high heel shoes that hurt her feet. There's a lot going down and it's like, you got to secure, you know, your past situations just because you get married. Doesn't mean the child support stuff is going to go away. You still don't know if Karen's baby is your baby. There's a lot going on and it's just messed up how he would just say, let's get married right now. Then, Things go from bad to worse. Where Fatima's like, nah, how about this? Let's call Karen and Heather. Get them over here to talk. Because, the, I mean, that can you imagine if you got down on one? Fellas, let me talk to you. Uh, yeah, I know nowadays it's not, you know, out of the ordinary for the woman to propose or whatever. But I'm, I'm old-fashioned. I, I want to propose to a woman instead of the other way around. But imagine getting down on one knee to ask someone to marry you. Or even worse, like let's say, uh, you know, you're planning the wedding and then your bride or spouse to be goes, but we need to talk to your ex first. Talk about a buzzkill. So yeah, that just sucked. And then to say that, let's call and have them over and everything. I'm going to do a separate video on this because I talked about it in my live stream and I'm like, okay, here's where Fatima just turned into the worst. Okay. Zach said, you know what? Let's have a good evening. Let's not deal with this because we call Karen and whatnot. And it's just, it's going to make things bad. Okay. We've already went through this. I don't want to do it again. Fatima was like, no, let's do it anyway. And as much as I want to harp on Fatima for being insensitive. Well, I can't really, well, no, I can do that because I just called out Zach for being insensitive for the whole, let's get married. Despite her already making her feelings clear on why, 
you know, she doesn't want to be married right now. So in any case, um, I still think this is stupid because of the fact that what the Heather makes sense. You don't need to talk to her right now. Not right now. You need to go through the damn court systems to have that legitimate DNA test before any sort of child support is given to her, you know, for that boy. With Karen, you don't even know if you're the father, so what's the need of making peace with her? I understand looking at the possible ramifications of baby mama number two and what that child's support should look like, but why not focus on the child that you have a 99.9% .9 chance of being the father of? You know, this Karen's, it just feels dragged out and forced due to the fact that the first half of the season was all about gathering at Karen's apartment for the letter reading and getting the feelings out there. Now the back half of the season seems to be gathering at Zach and Fatima's house to talk about child support and, you know, getting feelings out there before you announce you're engaged. And it, it just seems unnecessary. So he calls Karen, going back to the salon scene, and, you know, it caught her off guard because it's Zach. Pam's like, are you going to answer it? Go to the back, Pam. And pretty much, you know, I, I, I want to talk to you or I need to talk to you. And is there somewhere we can meet up? Oh, well, me, you, and Fatima. True story. Um, I remember the last girlfriend I had in 10th grade when I asked her to be my girlfriend. This conversation went exactly like the one that Fatima had with Zach and Karen over the phone where... Zach is saying one thing, but then instead of Fatima, it's my sister telling my, you know, you know, me how to ask this girl out. And it didn't really, it worked for like a, a couple months, but then yeah, whatever, I don't want to talk about it. But in any case, yeah, it's like me and you are me, you and Fatima. And it's like, it felt like Zach was a kid as opposed to a man. So basically she's like, and he was like, let's meet somewhere. And then Fatima's the one that says, let's meet at the house. And I'm like, what? The? Why? You know this is a triggering thing for Karen. So why would you want to have this conversation here? So in any case, she agrees to come over because we're head I'm heading to Andy's, but I can stop by for a little bit. So yeah, she's going to come over soon. And then they got to finish their dinner. But Heather is never called. Didn't you just say you were going to contact them both? Whatever. So Fatima knows best. So from there, Karen calls Andy about it. Then Andy's like, I'm going to go too. What the hell? And then she calls for Tima to ask her what's going on. And then I'm coming over right now. This was the most for self-inserting character moment I've ever seen. Now, trust and believe. Some people are like, Andy knows it's going to go down. She's going to go to make sure nothing pops off. That's all well and good, but she doesn't really need to be here. I don't see the point of her being there. I, I don't, I don't like she wasn't there at the letter reading thing. I mean, but Jeremy, her mom and Aaron were there for support. True, but Andy, I don't think she needs to be there because of the fact that she's always like, I'm staying out of this. I'm not taking sides. Why are you showing up then? Because now you're going to be exposed for knowing too much because in the promo for next week, you know, Karen confronts her about knowing about the engagement. But to be fair, Andy only knew like an hour or two prior to this little powwow at um, Zach and Fatima's house. So I don't know. It's ridiculous. But yeah, from there, Zach is rightfully pissed off because now you got me back in the damn sister circle again. So, you know, you could chalk that up to the fact that he's avoiding the problem. But at the same time, you know, it, it just doesn't seem right for Fatima to take over. So later on, uh, Andy and Karen arrive at the same time. And, you know, she asks about a purse and... Karen's like, I'm carrying my purse with me because what if this is a setup? Karen, what the hell do you think is going to happen? So she, they go in the house and then the episode ends with Fatima going, so are y'all ready to talk? And that's it. Yeah, this is a boring episode. It, it really was boring. You can skip it. So thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video.